Hey everyone out there, Tommy Von Voigt again with another mystery 80s guitar unboxing video. Now I swore I was not going to get any more anytime soon. I am completely full on projects and I'm not just saying that because my wife sometimes watches these videos. I genuinely mean it, at least I meant it, and then something came along that I absolutely couldn't say no to. $400, let's put that out here right now. What I'm about to unbox I got for $400. And of course it's from the 80s. Now here's the thing, this came from the UK, boxed like this, yes, you're seeing this correctly. It came without a case. Now after I did the deal, I was informed it was shipping without a case, and I was like, oh man, okay, brace yourself, we don't know what we're going to get. Now I've had a lot of problems with getting guitars from other countries because you gotta go through customs. You're, there's an increased chance of something getting damaged. Customs is the big problem there because, well, when you're dealing with vintage guitars, sometimes you're dealing with rosewood fretboards. Now, Brazilian rosewood is a protected species according to the CITES Treaty. And anything manufactured prior to that is exempt. And I believe if you're importing something back into the country whose manufactured is exempt, but it's, it's really kind of a gray area in a lot of ways, and that's because the people at Customs, they don't know anything about anything. They probably don't even want to be, it's just a job, clock in, clock out. And they've got, from what I understand, a binder filled with poorly scanned uh, examples of what the different wood grains look like. So if they need to check to see if something is an, like a protected species, they will just use this binder and try to match it by eye and they're not experts in wood grain and wood color or anything like that. I mean, I've been screwing with guitars now for years at this point. I have trouble telling what kind of wood was used in the construction of the guitar. So somebody at Customs is damn sure not gonna know what the hell they're talking about. And if something is a protected species and they feel you're not supposed to have it, as far as I know, they can seize the damn thing and destroy it. And you have no way of getting it back. The burden of proof is on you while it's in their possession. It's just a whole thing. So it always freaks me out. So that, coupled with the fact that this thing was shipped without a case and I was really sweating this one. But for the price, $400, I figured, okay, let's see what we get. So we're gonna open this thing up right now, show you what it is. And I genuinely have no idea if this thing survived shipping. I mean, look at the way this thing was packed. It looks like it's got some signs of impact damage. I mean, it's just... Now, I've had a guitar shipped before from another country without a case. A 1980 Greco BB-1000 that was shipped to me from Tokyo without a case. But it was shipped from a guitar store in Tokyo and it was packed exceptionally well. I'm still really, really, really nervous. Showed up okay. Had another guitar come for me from England got held up in customs for like a week and a half, got to me, it turns out customs had opened the damn thing, poorly threw it back in there, lost a part. It, it's just, yeah. So it's a whole thing when you're getting a guitar from another country. But well, let's see what we get. I genuinely do not know if this thing survived the trip. So I could pull this thing out and you might be about to get a, a very, very sad Tommy over here. So let's, let's see what happens here. can't see this, but the headstock was right up against the top of the box, which that's quote my good friend Paul Bertolino from the As It Should Be podcast. That's a no boy as far as I'm concerned. All right, nothing feels loose. It's just, my God, I mean, this is just crazy. This is just, this is just encased in bubble wrap sitting in a cardboard box shipped from the UK. Now, you know, I'll give him credit. This thing got here insanely fast. Like, I'm shocked at how fast this thing got here. It's possible to get something from another country really, really fast. It's usually customs that holds up the process. When the Greco came here from Japan, it actually arrived in the US in like a day and a half from Tokyo. It helps that I'm in New York City, which is of course a major shipping hub. 
What held up the process on that one was Customs just took their sweet ass time because the seller, even though he was a guitar store and should have known what he was doing when shipping to another country, did not actually list the woods that the body was constructed out of. So that just kind of just languished in, 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 uh, in purgatory, in Customs purgatory, until they finally, I guess, just gave up and released it. It took me calling twice a day for like five days straight before they finally gave me my damn guitar. This one made it right through customs with no problems, probably because it's below $800. I believe if it's, if it's below $800, you don't have to pay any customs charges. And got to me really, really fast. And I'm not seeing any breaks. Ooh, oh, ho, ho, ho. I am not seeing any breaks. I'm thinking this thing is intact and it is ladies and gentlemen 1989 charvel 750 xl yes <laughs> now what attracted me to this one well i was attracted to this one in particular because it was already stripped down and i like giving guitars the full tommy treatment which means i strip them down if they need a refinish i am definitely not hesitant to refinish a guitar Strip them down, do any repairs that are necessary, or build them back up with all brand new parts, the absolute best of everything, and make it the guitar that I would have wanted, rather than spend three or four grand for something that's in okay shape, but hey, it's all original, and then I'm gonna have to replace shit anyway, and it's not really the way I would have wanted it. Something like this is a dream come true for me, because, I mean, that initial step's already done. Now I just have to decide what color I wanna do it in. If I wanna go back to stock, which was blue, as you can see in the control and trim cavities, this was blue. That's the original finish, still visible there. Or, or you can also see it in the pickup routes. Or do I want to go with something else? I mean, really, the sky's the limit. I could do anything I want with it. Now, God, I cannot believe this thing survived intact. Like this angled headstock. And you can see, you can see the joint right there. And this thing did not snap. Now, something that I need to point out about this guitar the guy I got it from, and I'm not calling out the seller in any way. It was his guitar to do with what he wished. He had gotten this, and I think he had hoped he was going to be able to strip it down and refinish it in one of the trans finishes, like trans amber or something like that, which is the one that Sean Lane used. Now, this is otherwise known as the Sean Lane signature model. And his, I believe, was trans yellow or trans amber. And I think this guy, the guy I bought it from in England, got this with the express purpose of doing that to it. And when he got it, he stripped it down, stripped the blue paint off and realized it was basswood. So this is basswood construction, all right? Maple neck, I would presume. Maple neck, basswood body. And at that point, it kind of let the wind out of his sails and he just, I, he, I don't know, I think he might've kicked around trying to go forward with the project, but just never really got around to it. But what he did end up doing, and this is really screwy here, look at the neck heel. Now, the 750XL is a set neck super strat, which is pretty interesting. I mean, it's not completely unheard of, but it's relatively unusual in that most of the time you wouldn't have a set neck super strat, and you especially wouldn't have one that's 24 and three quarter inch neck scale. So this, became known as the Les Paul killer, even though if you ask people in the know, they'll be the first to tell you that they really kind of have their own thing going on, their own sound. They don't really sound like a Les Paul, but if you're coming from a Les Paul, this is a carved top, it's 24 and three quarter set neck. So it's gonna be probably the easiest way for you to get into a super strat if you're coming from the world of a Gibson, of, of a, if you're coming from the world of a Gibson. Now, the neck heel on these does not have this slope. What this, the guy I got it from in England, what he did is because he was really all about upper fret axis, which I totally relate to. He took a Dremel and carved it all away. And I guess he just kept going because he liked the way it looked and removed the lower horn. I think he said something about he didn't like the way the lower horn would sometimes poke into his body. He carved all that away. So the upper fret axis is fantastic. Normally there would be a bit of a chunky heel here, and this would not be dipping in the way it does. 
So I'm going to have to make a hard decision. How do I want to go about treating this? Like, do I want to fix just this part, the lower horn, and leave the heel as it is? Or do I want to fix this and the heel? I got to be honest with you. While this is technically incorrect to have the heel carved away like this, it's really smooth and it feels really good. It feels a lot more like my neck through guitars. Honestly, it doesn't feel too different from that Kramer Stage Master I did the last unboxing video for. So it feels really good. I might decide, hey, the originality is completely out the window on this thing. The finish is gone. I can do whatever I want with it. I might decide to leave this carved out the way it is. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of Ace Freely had a Les Paul in the 70s. He took, I don't know whether he had, took sandpaper or a chisel, and he did something similar to the Les Paul neck heel so that he can get up to the upper frets. I totally get it. But this, what he did to the, the lower horn here, I just can't abide that. That's going to have to be corrected. Now, since this is going to be a solid color, I mean, I'm not going to do a transparent finish because it's a basswood body, so why the hell would I? This is going to be easy to fix. Just notch that out, replace it with wood, carve it all out, shape it, boom, 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 you're done. The neck heel, ah, I just... I don't know. I, I really have to give that some consideration. I'm not going to lie. I, it feels really good. And I couldn't see myself wanting to add more wood back in the way. So we'll see. Leave it in the comments. What would you do with this neck heel? Would you leave that carved out like that all nice and smooth? Or would you return that back to stock too? It doesn't appear that the joint itself is in any danger. I think this should be good. And hell, if this thing just survives shipping from England, in a cardboard box with no case, and this didn't come loose, that neck heel is probably good and solid. Rosewood board, 24 frets. I mean, this is just a crazy, crazy guitar. So the 750XL, they only made them for one year technically, but you could find serial numbers for these that dip into the very end of 1988 and the very early, like the first few months of 1990. So they, technically went more than a year but it's really a 1989 model run and i wasn't really ever expecting to get my hands on one of these i mean they really don't pop up too often when they do they usually get pretty decent money especially if they're in nice shape definitely i've never seen one come up that i would be willing to do the tommy treatment to but this one the sky's the limit i can do anything i want it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun and it i can already tell this thing just feels good the neck feels good. I like how thin it is. I like the width of it. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. So that's the mystery unboxing for today. I hope you dig it. And oh, something I've been forgetting to do, and apparently all YouTubers do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now I'm officially a YouTuber. <laughs> Punch that like and subscribe button. Demolish that like and subscribe button. Beat that like and subscribe button like it owes you money. <laughs> so I've been having a blast sharing these videos with you. I hope you're enjoying them too. I'll see you for the next one. And I promise it's going to be quite some time until there's another guitar unboxing video. I swear. All right. Take it easy.